There are shocking rumors about Camp Moria, one of Europe's largest refugee camps. A group of Syrians claiming to be followers of the so-called Islamic State are spreading fear throughout the camp. Camp Moria is on the Greek island of Lesbos. Since 2015, tens of thousands of refugees have become stranded here on their way to Europe. Victims tell us how the supposed ISIS followers force their own religious views of morality upon others. They've also taken over a large portion of the camp's criminal activities. Has ISIS established a power base in Cap Moria? Camp Moria is fenced off like a high-security prison. Violence has become part of everyday life. The Greek police have to step in often. To the left lies the official camp. We aren't allowed to film there. Here on the right is where refugees who found no space in the official camp have makeshift shelters. It's a right to film here. We are following rumors of ISIS infiltration. There seems to be a new violent gang in Camp Moria, claiming to be an offshoot of the so-called Islamic State. They say they're from Deir Ezzor in Syria, one of the last ISIS strongholds. This is Ahmed. He says he lived directly next to the presumed ISIS group before he fled the camp in fear for his life. The camp is full of ISIS members. They sell banned substances, drugs. They hoard money and trade anything, for instance, mobile phones. They steal. They rob. So a criminal gang can operate undisturbed in refugee camps now? That would be bad enough. But they are presenting themselves as ISIS followers. Are they just trying to intimidate? Or is it founded in actual conviction? Either way, one thing's for sure, they're brutal. When they attack, they gang up on you with 20 people. They hit you with metal rods. They are merciless. They will shout the same slogans that ISIS members would. Allah is great, or remaining and expanding. Ahmed shows us footage of an incident in May when violence escalated sharply. Suspected ISIS members were apparently the driving force behind the attack. Armed with iron rods and knives, they went after other refugees in the camp. Several were severely injured and a handful were arrested. It's still unclear what led up to the bloody confrontation. Camp Moria has become notorious. Originally planned for 2,500 refugees, it now holds over 8,000. Aid organizations often criticize the inhumane conditions here. After visiting, Pope Francis even compared it to a concentration camp. The Greek government is considering shutting the camp down. We meet Jafar from Iraq. After his arrival in Camp Moria, he's sure ISIS militants try to recruit him. One of them is ISIS, took us to the caravan, okay? And after staying five days, and after Listening to them, they have a bad ideology. What did they do? They, they, they are so fanatic, and killing, about raping, about stealing, like that. And they have a bad ideology. But the, the very important point, rape. If you not Islam, I can rape you. And he, he raped before. He raped in Mosul and in Bar. I know this person. He is very dangerous. But he told me, if you tell the police, I will kill you. And you believe him? Yeah, I believe him. He has a, a knife. I cannot tell anyone. They have spies everywhere. Spies. Sounds like a network. German security staff can confirm they have information of an ISIS group in Camp Moria. But are they truly that well organized? We want to see what's going on inside the camp. Just one last time, check. We're not allowed in, yes. so two former residents go in for us and take a hidden camera with them. First stop, a cafe by Abu F. He's seen as the group's ringleader. 
It's an open secret that you can buy drugs here, our informants tell us. Hash, crystal meth, pills, anything. The man behind the coffee machine is one of Abu F's henchmen. One of our best informants is Reda. He was there when violence erupted. He watched the supposed ISIS members dump an unconscious victim into one of these trash bins. This is the camp's level three, apparently under ISIS control. The group consists of about 50 men. Independent sources confirm that. 50 in a camp of 8,000. Traces of past violence. We recognize this broken window from the video footage Ahmed showed us earlier. Here, ISIS graffiti along the wall. An open show of strength. It says, there is only us and the power belongs only to us. They've chosen their symbol, Deir Ezzur. Then, Allahu Akbar. Allah is great. And below that, Waqf, which stands for Religious Foundation. Kurds used to live here before ISIS threw them out. They rid this area of them and now it belongs to them. Apparently the group feels so safe that it can claim an entire zone within the camp for itself. Reda feared for his life here. His roommate at the time remembers well. They were hunting down Kurds to kill them, but he's Arabic, from Raqqa. They threatened to slit his throat. But me and the boys here said, no, no, don't kill him, he's not Kurdish. He grabbed me by the neck and lifted me up, then he threw me over there. Now he has his own apartment. He choked me and pressed a blade on my throat here. He told his friends, hold him down so I can slit his throat. I left Syria because of ISIS. But when I arrived here, I realized the same ISIS rules apply here too. I ran from death, but it followed me here. Reda too talks of spies operating through the entire camp. Our initial suspicions seem confirmed. It looks like there is a well-organized group in Camp Moria that terrorizes others and claims to act on the authority of ISIS. Do they have plans to export the terror from inside the camp to Europe? On the one hand, the fact that many are openly professing membership speaks against that. On the other hand, we also know that intelligence agencies are aware of them. It's obvious that they have it in for Kurdish people. Hundreds have fled from the violence in the camp. And what are Greek authorities and police doing to stop the violence? The Greek Ministry for Migration Policy refused an interview. They say they're too busy to provide a spokesperson. The police, too, remain silent. We move on to the refugee camp that many Kurdish families fled to. Pikba camp is a project for the most vulnerable refugees, such as families with children and the critically ill. Here we meet Juan. He too is Kurdish and the point of contact for these new arrivals. Why are Kurdish people being persecuted? They ask why you are not fasting, why you listen to music in the Ramadan, why you don't have a hijab. After they told Allah Akbar some, something, and they hit uh, children, women pregnant, and uh, all, all, not just men. All Kurdish people who fled Camp Moria were resettled to Athens, he tells us. Other inhabitants show us pictures of the victims who fled. Not even the children were spared, they say. One person even had a cross cut into his leg, a punishment for carrying a crucifix around his neck. Uh -huh. uh, Sudi works in Pikba camp. She wants the authorities to take action. And that they should be arrested and they should be controlled by the authorities. Instead of, uh, you know, giving a, 
giving an impression that everybody is connected to this, which is not true. To her, the conflict is not only about religion. It is definitely uh, connected to the conflict in uh, Syria. There are populations that they are fighting, they are coming from war zones uh, where they fight each other and they are living next to each other. Informants say that the group attacks frequently. Our first contact, Ahmed, brings us to yet another victim. Greetings, it's so good to see you're doing better. Two weeks ago, Amin was stabbed with a knife, 14 times. He nearly died. For now, I live in this apartment until I can resettle to Athens. My life is in danger here. Amin and many other victims want to get to Athens, to safety. Back in Berlin, we get in touch with the man who had a cross carved into his leg. He's made it to Athens. Does he feel safer now? I'm scared. That's why I only leave the house with friends. I've heard that some of the men who attacked me will be coming here soon. By now I'm afraid of anybody who even looks like the people who abused me. It's something we hear time and again. Some of the alleged ISIS leaders have already made it to Athens. If the camp on Lesbos closes down, it's unclear where its inhabitants will go. And so it's uncertain if members of the violent gang will carry their hostility to other places in Europe.